Last PFL season, an unlikely story was written. Oh, a talented fighter who battled homelessness won a PFL contract. Oh. Then he kept winning oh. until his dream of becoming champion became reality. performance now Impa Kasunganai returns looking for back-to-back -back belts but this year he's the hunted as easy Alex Polizzi looks to play spoiler Alex Polizzi gets it done it's a new season and it's anyone's to win oh, oh there it is former champs perennial contenders and a group of dangerous challengers from Bellator Here all look to make this year their dream season. Live from Las Vegas, lightweights and light heavyweights begin their march towards a world title belt. This is the 2024 PFL regular season. Welcome PFL fans to Las Vegas, Nevada as we kick off a huge weekend in combat sports Bruno Miranda is already in the building he's chasing some points tonight in a place in the lightweight season standings Brent Primus has come over from Bellator a former champion in Bellator he's also looking to make a claim in the PFL smart cage as he makes a debut in a new organization welcome to the PFL pre-fight show brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook Here's a look at our main event and co-main events tonight. It's all about the lightweights and the light heavyweights as we embark on our regular season. This is the second event of the year. Here's our full main card. It'll start 9 Eastern on ESPN2, simulcast on ESPN+. Plus. Antonio Carlos Jr., he's a former champion here in the PFL light heavyweight division. He welcomes a newcomer, Simon Bayong. You look at the odds here. He's a big-time favorite. Sada Boussi, Mads Burnell, Clay Collard, Rob Wilkinson, Impa Kasungadai in the main event. All favorites. And, of course, the challengers are hungry in those underdog positions. Here's your early card. First fight will be at 6.30 Eastern right here on ESPN+. Plus, Elvin Espinosa was supposed to be an alternate. He gets the call, and now he'll be part of our lightweight season. He's the favorite against Adam Piccolotti, who's a longtime Bellator veteran. Bruno Miranda is a big favorite. That number keeps moving. We'll talk more about that in just a second. Sean O'Connell, Tyron Woodley, Randy Couture. The toughest test in mixed martial arts got tougher here in 2024. PFL acquires Bellator, and with Bellator comes a roster of really talented fighters, some of whom have jumped into this regular season format. Our first event last week, Randy, really showed how difficult it's going to be to win a championship this year. Absolutely. Last weekend, we opened the season at San Antonio, Texas, with 10 first-round season championship fights. Of those 10 fights, seven of them were finishes. There's Dichiba getting it done. Hackett getting it done with the submission, or getting submitted, rather. And here we have the Russian getting after it against Ante D'Elia, former champion in PFL. Welcome to Professional Fighters League right there. And it got a lot tougher this season. And we talk about the talent that's been added. We talk about how this year is more difficult. No division is that more true than my favorite, light heavyweight. A bunch of, of talent at this 205-pound class. Definitely, it's a lot of talent. I love the young blood. I love the new fights coming and new talent. But the light heavyweight division is infested. It's saturated, and it is stacked with champions. Look, last year's season, Impa Kasaganai won the championship. Rob Razor Wilkinson, shoe face. You even got Sadabu who's jumping from welterweight all the way up to 205. And we can't leave out our dog, Sean former PFL champion as well. I like the light heavyweight division because it's almost like the heavyweight point guard. They got the power, they got the speed, but they still got the agility just like the smaller fighters. All right, let, let's talk about the main event. Impa Kasunganai, one of the great stories in all of combat sports last year. He's actually making the walk for the sixth time in 13 months. This wow. guy is staying busy, Randy. Impressive. Came through the Challenger Series all the way to the championship last season. Already fought in the Challenger Champions versus Champions in Riyadh this year. 
and back in it for a repeat in the light heavyweight division at 205. Well-rounded, very well-conditioned. Many times you see him look like he fight again the same night. He's got great hands. His wrestling and submission skills are on point as well. This is a very, very tough, well-rounded fighter. His opponent, Alex Belize, recognizes the opportunity in front of him tonight. He's the underdog. He's the one who is overlooked. That's where Impa Kasungani was at the beginning of last season. And Alex spoke about that. He spoke about how last season, Impa was the person that was going through the challenger season. He know this is no easy task, but what he's looking at is the fact that he has a collegiate wrestling background from Northwestern University. Jim Pulver told me this a long time ago. He said, when you're fighting against somebody that's super technically sound, he said, make it ugly, then make it pretty. That's what he needs to do against Emperor. He has the tools, he has the intangibles, and if he goes out here and wins this fight tonight, he intercepts the number one seed, and he moves forward in the, in the tournament. An incredible main event. Take a closer look. Ipa Kasunganai started his season on the PFL Challenger Series, and he just earned himself $1 million in a 205-pound title. There's a lot to like about Alex Easy Belize because this guy can fight in all ranges. His wrestling is good. His stand-up is good. He will take a shot. Oh, Ipa Kasunganai! Oh, my goodness! I just won the Hamlet! From the Challenger Series to a championship bout. Looks like he's going to do it a more. He tried first. Beautiful job by Polizzi. Polizzi takes the back. And Alex Polizzi gets it done. Impa comes out much more aggressive here in the second frame. Big combination. Impa drops Hamlin. Weird explosive takedown by Polizzi. A real treat in that main event. The whole crew is here for the DraftKings pre-fight show, and that means Brett Okamoto, another Vegas local, is in the building tonight helping us out. Brett has more on Impa Kasangani. Brett? I think you said the, the correct words there, Sean. A real treat in the main event. Impa Kasangani, that's exactly what he is. Such an impressive young man from every different aspect of life. He was the story of 2023 in this weight class, and then instead of just hanging out, enjoying that million dollars, he jumps into a fight with... Bellator middleweight champion Johnny Eblen. And let's revisit that fight in March because it was a very good one. Impa doing what we grew accustomed to seeing him do last year. Knocks him down in the second round, but Johnny Eblen battles back. Split decision, three round. Great fight there. Impa coming up just short, but it just shows how much this guy wants to challenge himself. I mean, don't forget, when he won last year, he was even calling out Francis Ngannou. This is a guy who wants to stay active few months after winning a million dollars. I mean, Sean O'Connell won a million dollars, and we're still waiting for that vacation to end. Get back in the cage. You're going to be waiting for a really long time, Brad, if you're hoping for me to climb back in. Look, tonight's card is fascinating for a lot of reasons, and we know there's folks out there wondering how we should be betting it. We have the best in the business to guide you through that process. Of course, I'm talking about Jonathan Coachman and Ian Parker. Yeah, Sean, it's also fascinating how you can say with a straight face, the entire crew is here in Vegas when it's clear that your boy is the only one that is not. I'm still trying to figure out how Ian Parker is there, but hey, Ian, I'll deal with you later. Let's deal with this main event. Impa, he's the only returning champion. He's north of minus 300. We can't play that number, so what do we do? Well, Coach, don't worry. I heard your invite is still in the mail, so it will get there hopefully by next PFL event. But look, when it comes to Impa Kasaganai, treat is the right word i think he's a great champion he's coming to prove that he's going to do it again what he did against johnny eblin nothing short of spectacular minus the result he dropped him which no one else has really done consistently he was able to stick with the wrestling until the end i think against polizzi he'll be able to do it he knows the system he knows the season and you're going to go from a minus 300 if you take a money line which we won't maybe at a parlay later but i'm going to go tk or ko at plus 300 and he's going to get the six points let's go you're darn right. I will give the PFL bosses a lot of credit. They put all the light heavyweight fights, Sean O'Connell, on the main card tonight. Now, you have to deal with Ian Parker's bad jokes there at Smart Cage side. Not me anymore. Back to you. Coach, we know that's the real reason you didn't show up in person in Vegas. You don't want to be in the same room as Ian Parker. That's fine. We'll talk about the co-main event. This one equally intriguing, maybe even more so than that main event. Last year, the champion at 205 pounds, Impa Kasungani. Two years ago, the guy who looked unbeatable was Razor Rob Wilkinson. 
Tyron Woodley, he is back, looking to repeat here in 24. Definitely. When you look at Razor Rod Wilkinson, he's the one that fought, brought the first strap back to Tasmania, the actual legitimate from a big organization. Look at his strikes. He has great Muay Thai. He has great punches. The last seven fights, he hasn't suffered a loss. So when you look at him, he's coming out to prove a point. He's hated to go once before. And there's nothing like having that gold around your belt and having to hunt it back down once again. That's the position he's in. This is the first round of the season, and he's going to get a crack. Well, Rob Wilkinson, at 6'3", 6'3", and some change, is usually the bigger guy, right? He's usually looking down as, a, as his opponents. That's not the case against Tom Breeze, who's feeling a little bit overlooked. He thought he was going to have to be an alternate. He gets elevated, and he gets elevated all the way to a co-main event spot against a former champion. He says, perfect, that's just fine. Well, on paper, this looks like a grappler versus a striker with the Muay Thai background of Rob Wilkinson and Tom Breeze with 13 submission victories to his credit. But he says, I'm being overlooked. I want to step in the pocket and show my boxing skills off and show everybody what I got. You better not overlook me. I'm going to step in Rob Wilkinson's face and let him have it. Now, if he gets a chance to wrap his arm around Wilkinson's neck just like this, I guarantee he's not going to pass that opportunity up either. This guy's very well-rounded and a game fighter, very athletic. Going to be an interesting matchup. So tasty little co-main event as well. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we got to talk about what a lot of people are calling the people's main event. And when I tell you who's involved in this, you're going to totally understand why. I'm talking Cassius Clay Collard versus Patricky Pitbull. Knockout power versus smooth and slick boxing it does not get any better than this and of course this is a lightweight regular season fight with a place in the standings playoff implications and all that comes with being in the pfl format we'll get to that when the pfl pre-fight show brought to you by DraftKings sportsbook continues hoping left hook landed for clay collard and the right hand behind it patricky piffle on the hunt the guts in the heart of a champion he's been at the top Oh, Stevie Ray's in trouble. Oh, Stevie Ray hurts. No. Oh, he's hurt. It's over. Stevie Ray hurts. A huge win for Pitbull. Oh. That's it. Pitbull looking to finish. And he's done. Some speed now from Clay Collins. And the right hand. Here comes Pitbull. Welcome back, fight fans, to the PFL Pre-Fight Show, presented to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Getting you ready for lightweight and light heavyweight action tonight in Las Vegas, Nevada. Another look at our main card. First fight on the main card will be at 9 Eastern, simulcast on ESPN2, and of course right here on ESPN+. Plus. As you can see, some bangers there. We look at the odds. 
Antonio Carlos Jr. is a big time favorite, as is Impa Kasunganai. Tucked right in the middle of your screen there is a lightweight feature that has my palms all sweaty. <laughs> Anticipating this one, I'll call it the people's main event. I'll call it the fans' delight. You can call it whatever you want, but this is two incredible strikers squaring off for points, for high stakes. I'm talking about Cassius Clay Collard and the former Bellator lightweight champion, Patricky Pitbull. Let's start with Cassius Clay Collard. We've seen him in the PFL. We've seen him in some of the best fights that the PFL has ever put in the smart cage. And tonight has the makings of being another one of those. Absolutely. The thing that's impressive about Collard is while everybody else was locked down in COVID, this guy stormed into boxing and ruined prospects in about eight fights. He's got amazing striking, but his first sport was wrestling. And his wrestling is also on point. Changed back to his old coach. Been working a lot more on his wrestling the last two seasons. But the sheer output of punches, uh, somewhere north of 190 punches in an MMA fight. The combinations are sharp, rips to the bottom. Out of 25 victories, 17 of those are KOs. Oh. 11 KOs in Bellator alone, giving him the record in Bellator. He means violence every single time he comes in the cage. We know him for his power. And going against Collard, it. we're going to see how that power goes with the technique of the boxing. I love this fight. You guys can call it a fan's delight. I call it thunder and lightning. And we'll see what happens when they call the fight. <laughs> Let's take a look, though, at, uh, as much as I like the lightweights. This is really, tonight's all about the light heavyweights, right? <laughs> Let's not get way. distracted. <laughs> so we showed you this a little bit earlier. I just want to drive this point home. 2023 PFL light heavyweight champion here competing tonight. Same true for the 2022. The 2021 light heavyweight champion. Injury took him out, and he did some reality television. Antonio Carlos Jr. is back. PFL Europe light heavyweight champion. Jacobeno getting his first chance at the million-dollar season. And the welterweight champion from 2022 is making the leap two weight classes up. Sadabusi at six foot three with an 80-inch reach says, yeah, I'm actually built for the light heavyweight division. I'm going to do that. Oh, by the way, the first ever light heavyweight champion is calling the fights tonight. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, this is about shoe face, though. Antonio Carlos Jr., one of the best grapplers in the sport, won the 2021 Light Heavyweight Championship. Let's refresh your memory with how he made that happen. Antonio Carlos Jr., the man they call Shoeface. Martin Hamlet, the Norwegian, for a belt and one million dollars. Nice double in. Good set up there for Antonio Carlos Jr. Oh. Right out of the back of Martin Hamlet. Oh. face back chasing another million how are we betting the rest of the main card we got to send it back to coach and ian so they can give us that advice fellas yeah sean i'm always amazed how you can show all those champions and somehow you bring it back to you every time that's next level kind of stuff right there but ian let's not focus on sean right now let's focus on shoe fake because in a lot of books especially at DraftKings, we're around minus 400 we can't play that so what do we do well, we just hit the over on Sean O'Connell Championship references, and the fight hasn't even started yet. <laughs> We're going to go to the betting big board brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. As you mentioned, Coach, shoe face minus 410. Parley material, sure, but let's go a step further to fight props. I'm actually kind of blown away by submission here at plus 110, the submission ace, especially where he has the advantage. I'm thinking overhand right, take down, take the back. Submission plus 110 by sub. Let's go. Yeah, the next fight, you heard the guys talking about it. You got two OGs here in the PFL, but to go up to light heavyweight from welterweight, Sadabu C, give him credit, but is it too much of a jump, Ian? You know what? He, he's going to be tested here when it comes to the wrestling. There's no question about it. And 
if he could keep the distance and use his striking, then he could win. I think Silvera, though, you know, at this weight, man, Sadabusi really walks around big anyway. I'm going to flip a coin here and go Silvera. I just think the wrestling is the advantage. So we're going to go Josh Silvera here at very small odds. I think it's like minus 110 at the moment. All right, in some places, actually plus money, too. Now we see the two names on there. Everybody's already excited about it. We're calling it the People's Main Event. This is the one I'm most excited about. Blue collar on one side, Clay Collar. And you got the stud, the stud on the other side, Pitbull. Where are you going? I'm going to go Clay Collar here. Now, he's currently minus 210, which is a, a minus 225. It just went up a little bit. I'm still going to roll with that play. But you know what? It wouldn't shock me if he gets a finish later on. The body work, the volume. He's a great fighter. We know that... He's so durable, and as long as he doesn't fight someone like Antonio McKee Jr., who could take him down and keep him there, to me, that's where Collard gets the win, and I'm going there. Interesting. All right, our last one we're going to talk about right now. We got all these former champions fighting tonight, 2022. Rob Wilkinson, he reached the top of the mountain in 2024. Ian, can he do it again starting tonight with a win? I think he can, but the guys mentioned that Tom Brees thinks he's being overlooked, and he might be, but the odds aren't saying that. Wilkins only minus 148, and he was minus two and change a few weeks ago. That's because Brees is so good when that fight hits the ground. However, if he does what he says he's going to do, and like Randy mentioned, he's going to strike with Razor Rob Wilkinson, then the sub game's not going to matter because he's going to go to the shadow realm, and there'll be six points towards Wilkinson. But at minus 148, give me Rob Wilkinson on the money line. Let's go. Boom, all day, let's go. Seven big fights on the main card tonight. But Sean O'Connell, do not forget that still to come here on the pre-fight show, we've got early card fights to pick as well. We got you covered. But right now, let's send him back to the very first light heavyweight champion in the PFL. I like that. I like when I could get coached to reference my glory days, too. It makes me feel really nice. Coming up very soon on ESPN Plus right here is the early portion of our regular season card. First fight, 6.30 Eastern, right here on ESPN+. Plus. We'll begin things with a heavyweight showcase. You can see Marcelo Nunes is the favorite there. And then a light heavyweight feature at the end of our early card, Dovlitsan Yagshig Muradov and Jakub Neto. The Slovenian flag being waved here by Jakub Neto, and he is a favorite at minus 135. Look, I was there. I, I watched Jakub Neto's journey. He came out of nowhere look let's face it slovenia is not exactly a hot hotbed of rising mixed martial arts talent but this guy came from an olympic development program in team handball and some injuries there he had to transition to mixed martial arts and then he burst onto the pfl europe scene on his way to a hundred thousand dollar championship and of course an invitation here to our global season let's take a look at how Jakob netto got it done in that pfl europe championship Jakob Neto, the gorilla. He's been a fast finisher, but he has no problem going into deep waters against Simeon Powell. Nice right hand. Tough through for Neto. Nice. A suplex by Neto. What an exchange that was. So you see the power possessed by Jakob Neto, who's one of the largest bodies in this light heavyweight division in 2024. That is a feature bout on our early card. And an early card means early card bets. And that means Jonathan Coachman and Ian Parker to guide us through how we bet in these early fights. Yeah, Sean, thank you once again. And Ian, when you talk about journeys, those are nice. But they have to turn into wins so the journeys continue. When you talk about Neto, what do you see? Look, PFL Europe, he was unbelievable. Even when he was in trouble, he came back and he got the knockout. So we're going to go back to the betting big board presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. And Neto is sitting at a pretty minus 135. I think he should be a little higher. His opponent, very durable, tough. However, I call Neto the Terminator for a reason. This guy packs a crazy punch. Let's go Neto at minus 135. Here yeah, we talk about in our next fight some of the former champions with all the organizations, especially Bellator, and that's where we find a guy named Premis. But he's taking on Bruno Miranda. I like the matchup, but what do you like to bet in it? You know what, Coach? Brent Primus, when he won the championship at Bellator, and even of recent, we know what his game is. He's an excellent jiu-jitsu fighter. His stand-up is all right. However, if he can't get Bruno Miranda down, Miranda, he is a tank. He packs a lot of power, hooks, durable. He's got to keep this fight on the feet. At plus 114, I think the dogs are barking here. Let's go Bruno Miranda. 
Oh, feeling frisky over there. A little bit. Now, I've already gotten three tweets on the X in the last five minutes. He said, Coach, where is Parker's parlay? So, Ian, I ask you the same question. Where is Parker's parlay? We're going to start off. We got Shoe Face leading the way in minus 410. As you see, we go up the line and make my plays. The line's going to drop. Let's go, Clay Collard. We already went down to minus 126. Last but not least, last year's champ, Impa Kasaga and I. We're going to get plus 138 on the three leg Parker's parlay this week. Let's go. You give me any plus money, and finally you're there in Vegas. I think you got a little extra guts today. It's time for a bold prediction. Presented as always by Puncher's Chance. Where are you heading for this? Well, first, what we're going to do, Coach, look, Carlos Jr. here, I think this is where the biggest disparity is, is that submission game. So we're going to go round one for Carlos Jr., okay? It's not that bold. It's actually could probably happen, but I want to go and get it done this week. Let's go. You know where they're not going to stay where that's not that bold? the pay window and we're going to be here all night long cashing tickets but sean o'connell is this time of the week every week where i say to you let's stop the talking and let's get to fighting back to you yeah very much looking forward to that some quick thoughts from tyron and randy here what are we most looking forward to tonight randy yeah i'm excited about this pit bull collared fight i mean i just think it's going to be fireworks from start to finish and i'd be very surprised if it goes to distance what do you have for me, Tyron? I'm definitely excited about that fight, but I also want to see how Salvador goes when he goes up to a five and dealing with a pressure rusher like Joshua Silvera. I would love to see how that fight plays out. It's a matter of distance and striking, so mm -hmm. that's a fight I'm really looking forward to seeing. Out of all the light heavyweights, if you're handicapping the field, who's the favorite? I think you got to go with last year's champ and Impa and I and the impressive thing that he did last season and just rolled right into the Eblen fight and here we are. Uh, he's impressive in every category. We saw Patricky Pitbull with Bellator gold around his waist. Can he achieve that same glory in the smart cage? I mean, he's definitely capable. We know what he can do with his hands. We know the power. Um, I feel like a fight like this against Collar is a fight he needs. When somebody comes after him and they bring their hands forward, I feel like that brings a dog out of him. So I love to see what happens in this one. Do not sleep on the European champion, Jakob Neto, at 205 pounds. Big main event coming tonight. Impa Kasunganai chased a championship and got it a season ago. He started on the Challenger Series. He finished the year as a millionaire. He's already fought once in 2024. He's willing to do it again five times this year. And Alex Easy Polizzi is looking to spoil the party. An underdog with a chip on his shoulder tonight in the main event. The PFL on ESPN Plus is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Celsius, live fit. The official energy drink of the PFL. Introducing a new era of MMA with Takedown as the official apparel partner of the PFL. Democratizing finance for all, Robin Hood.